The Revit SDK contains a great deal of useful information regarding the Revit API. In this video, we shall take a look at the three main categories of contents that the SDK contains. They include the documentation, samples, and tools. Now let us take a look at the documentation that the SDK contains. The SDK contains a Word document on getting started with the Revit API. It also contains a document which lists the changes in the current version when compared to the previous release. The SDK also contains a PDF document called the Revit API Developer Guide. This serves as an introduction to various API concepts on a chapter-by-chapter -chapter basis. As you can see in the document, it lists out various chapters based on the API topics, right from getting started to specialized topics like application document, selections, collections, instances, views, material, etc. The Revit API help documentation found in the revitapi.chm file is one of the most important source of API related information. You can read up in the CHM file on a topic by topic basis. For example, I could read up on the application class, I could read up on the application members, constructor, etc. Or I could search for a specific method by typing in the name and clicking on list topics. This gives me a list of all the relevant search results and I can click on the methods. In this case, I get an overload for this method and I can then click on each of these overloads to find out more on the description, syntax, return values, etc. Some of these topics also often include some samples. The SDK also contains a comprehensive list of API samples. These cover almost all the major Revit API topics. One useful tip is to open the main samples solution in Visual C Sharp Express or Visual Studio and search for the API method you wish to work with. If it exists in the samples, you can very quickly see how the API is being used and if it is appropriate, you could even in fact reuse the code in your plugin too. The SDK also contains Visual Studio for applications samples. These show how to take advantage of VSTA to put together quick prototypes to test particular Revit API functionality. Revit SDK also contains various tools which help in the application development process. For example, the Revit Lookup tool. Revit Lookup tool is a tool that helps analyze the currently running instance of Revit, the documents that are loaded into it, and the elements that are contained in the project. In other words, it is a great tool for taking the lid off the Revit's database and understanding what's going on within it. The tool comes with complete source code, thus you can always understand how to access and analyze model information programmatically. It is the most commonly used standalone tool for inspecting the Revit model. Since I already have Revit Lookup installed on my system, on the hotel.rvt file, I can select a wall, click on the Add-ins tab, access the Revit Lookup drop-down list, and browse to the Snoop current selection. As you can see, just by clicking an element and using the lookup tool, I can access various API information related to the element without writing a single line of code. For example, I directly know the name of the element, the ID, the category that this element belongs to, which in this case is walls. I can also get information about its geometry, the parameter that it contains, for example, its area, length, top constraints, etc and other information like the phase information and type information. The other tool that the SDK contains is the Add-in Manager. The Add-in Manager is a tool which helps load external commands and applications to Revit without having to manually edit the manifest files. The SDK contains an installer which can be used to directly install this utility for Revit. The Add-in Manager has its own dialog which allows us to specify the plugin DLL, its path, the command name and a description. So let us try and load the first plugin that we created using this tool. Here we can specify the name and the description for this plugin and we can directly select the plugin and click on run. As you can see, without even writing a single line into the manifest file, we were able to register our plugin into Revit. This information can also be saved for future use. This utility helps avoid typing errors when working with manifest files which can often lead to unexpected results.